Today I'd like to talk to you about resistors. So in the last lesson we learned about wires and how wires have resistance inside of them that slows down the flow of electricity. Most times we want wires with the smallest amount of resistance possible so that we get electricity through the wire as efficiently as possible. There are some times, like in this light bulb, where we may want to have a higher resistance so that we generate heat as the electrons move through the wire. However, most times we're looking for low resistance. There are devices though that are named resistors where we intentionally create an object with a certain amount of resistance to help us limit the amount of current flowing through a circuit. These resistors will help us control how much current is going to get to different parts of our circuit. So here is a breadboard that has a whole bunch of resistors in it. And the thing you'll notice about resistors is that they are generally cylindrical with four stripes painted on them. Those stripes are key to figuring out how much resistance is present inside the resistor. The resistors are too small to actually write numbers on, so these stripes act as a code that we can use to figure out how much resistance is in the resistor. And again, there's so many different resistors so that we can, we can control how much gets to different parts of the circuit. Some areas might need more, some areas might need less current. So the resistors will help us control that. So here's the color code. You can write this down on one of your reference sheets. The colors run from black to white, and they go like this. Black, brown, then the rainbow, Roy, G, B, V, and then gray, white. So it's black, brown, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet, gray, and white. And each color represents a different digit. So we start on this end with zero, and we end on this end with nine. All right, so they're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Now, I said there were 10 different colors, and that is true for the first three stripes on your resistor. The fourth stripe will either be gold or silver. And you're gonna say, how can I tell them from yellow and white? Well, the fourth band will never have yellow or white. It'll be gold or it will be silver. Gold represents a resistor that is correct to within 5% error of what is written with those colors. Silver is a little less precise. A resistor with silver as its fourth stripe could be off by up to 10%. So let's put it in practice and see how it works. Okay, so the first resistor I'd like you to draw is red and green and orange and gold. Okay, so red is two and green is five. This is easy for me to remember because I see red and green and I think Christmas, 25, the 25th. Okay, so it's two, five, orange is three. Now this is tricky, the third stripe you don't put a three, you put three zeros. Boom. So that resistor, red, green, orange, is 25,000 ohms. Since uh, gold is the third strike, it could be off by up to 5%. So if you take 5% of 25,000, you might be lower by that much or higher by that much. I'll show you exactly what I mean with the next one because it will be easier with 10%. Okay, so the next resistor we're going to do has colors yellow, purple, red, white. The yellow is four, the purple is seven, and the red is two. Again, two zeros. The third stripe tells you the number of zeros. And then we put ohms. Since silver is the third strike, that means it could be off by 10%. 10% is easy to work with. 10% of 4,700 
is 470 ohms. So 4700 is the middle of the range that it could be in, but it might be higher by 470 or lower by 470. Most times it's good enough that you're able to just get this. I will not be a stickler for the silver and the gold, but please know the gold are more precise, the silver less so. Okay, so that is your resistor code. When you see your resistors, one thing you have to be able to do is figure out where do I start reading it from? So if you look at this one, the first thing you want to find is the silver or gold end. The silver is down there, so this would be strike one, two, and three. So it's red, purple, red. Two, seven, zero, zero. Okay, if you look at this one, the silver is down this end. So when you read this one, it's strike one, two, three. Brown, black, red. One, zero, zero, zero. That would be 1,000 ohms, plus or minus 10%. All right, so the silver and gold are very helpful because they let you know where you're gonna start reading the resistor from. Here are four that you should try and do on your own. If you can't see the colors, it's red, blue, green, and then it's yellow, purple, orange, and then this one is backwards, so it's black, orange, red, and then orange, orange, black. So pause the video and see if you can get the right answers. Okay, so you should have gotten for the first one, 2.6 million. Red, blue, two, six. Green, five zeros. For this one, four, seven, and three zeros. For this one, you start with the brown, so it's one, three, and two zeros. And here with black, be careful, it's three, three, and then no zeros, so it's just 33. For bigger resistors, sometimes people will write them like kilo ohms, 47. I'm sorry, 47 kilo ohms. And this one, 2.6 mega ohms. You don't have to put the metric prefix, but it sure does make things easier. Here's some where I'd like you to try going the other way. So I start by telling you the resistance, and I'd like you to figure out what the three bands would be. So again, pause it, and then see how you make out. Okay, why do we use resistors? Well, I told you we use them to limit the amount of current getting to a certain object, so let me show you what I mean. Here is the back of a speaker. And you'll notice that the back of the speaker tells you that it's got eight ohms inside the speaker itself. This is the resistance of the material that makes up the speaker. The problem is that's not enough resistance. If I hook that directly up to the power source, I might blow the speaker out, and then I'm out the money for the speaker. So you'll notice that they wired into that a resistor with the colors orange, orange, black, which we saw just a few minutes ago, was 33 ohms. That extra resistance will mean less current getting into the speaker and a greater chance that we will not blow out the speaker. Now, if you use too big of a resistance, you wouldn't get any current getting into the speaker and you wouldn't get any sound coming out. So it's a delicate mix between too much current and not enough current. And resistors will allow us to control the amount of current getting into that speaker. Sometimes we don't want to hardwire a resistor in there like we did here. We want to hook in what's called a variable resistor. This is where the user can control the resistance. 
So to think about this, I have a long nichrome wire, about a meter long. And I'm gonna hook it up so I only use about 10 centimeters of wire. And then I'm gonna hook it up so I use much more wire, about 80 centimeters of wire. And what you'll notice is when I used a little bit of wire, I had a bright light. And when I used a lot of wire, I had a less bright light. So the point of a variable resistor is to give the user control over resistance by changing the length of wire used. And that will allow us to control how much electricity our object gets. We can make the light bright if we want it, or we can make the light dim if we want it. So these are the dimmer switches in your house. You slide them up and down, there's a little wire in there, and you're using more or less of the wire, which will make the light brighter or dimmer. We have them on things like amplifiers, where we can make it louder or softer. It's a volume control, it's a variable resistor. Here's a bunch of variable resistors you can just take a look at. Some of them I have here live for you to see. This one is from an old race game that I used to have with real cars that would go on a track. You'd pull the trigger back and the cars would go faster or slower depending on how far you pulled it. If you look, there's a little copper rod and as you slide it along, you're using either more or less of that wire inside to get more or less current going to your car. This is from an old radio. And you can see the electricity goes in through this um, graphite. The more graphite I use, the less current I'm going to get to my radio speaker. So it makes it louder or softer. Right now it's in a very loud position. If I turn it more and it has to go through more graphite, it's going to make the radio less loud. All right? So again, this is for the race car, and this is the one for my radio.